Carlos, we are here with Luca Maraschi for another collector talk. Let's go! How are you doing? We are here with Luca Maraschi that joined us all the way from Vancouver to Zouk in order to film this new collector video. Hi Luca, how are you? It's great to have great you here. Summer. Great to be here in uh, Zouk. It's amazing that you made it and that you took your time. So today we're filming this at the store that has his, at his place because I, I didn't have the chance to go to Vancouver <laughs> yes. yet. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, soon. Anyway, it's amazing that we have the chance to discover your beautiful collection. Uh, maybe before we start, I would mention the fact that we know each other now since a bit less than a year. Yeah. But uh, it's incredible what you, like your passion, what has, uh, what has done with you. Before we start, I would like to ask and to understand and also tell our viewers who are you? Oh, that's Luca. difficult. I, uh, I'm a part-time uh, entrepreneur because I, I'm a full-time pen collector. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a tech entrepreneur. I started since I was very young being in coding and then building companies. Uh, uh, I am addicted to uh, startups and uh, to fountain pens. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Great. And you, it sounds like you're Italian like me. No, I know you're Italian. 100% Italian. You're Italian, yeah. but you live in Vancouver since how long? Oh, since 2017, 18. Fantastic. Yeah, I've been living in Amsterdam and I live around the world in Asia. And so I've been traveling and since I was uh, 19. So okay, half of my cool. life. Uh, with mom and dad in Italy and half of my life outside like a big boy. All, all, all over the world. <laughs> all over the world. The, the automatic question that comes to my mind is uh, why pens? You have such an amazing collection. You're a young, successful entrepreneur. Why do you collect pens? Why don't you collect cars and watches? You might be collecting <laughs> that too, but what drove you to pens? It started when I was very, very young, when I was a kid, and I remember my grandfather having this Parker pen, uh, this ballpoint, and then uh, um, I saw my father always uh, using the same pen to sign important documents. Uh, mm -hmm. And I started to enter into this world of stationaries. Mm -hmm. I remember being uh, eight to 10 years old and yeah. uh, uh, traveling with my parents. Uh, I remember we were going uh, uh, to Germany because my father is a, a train, uh, uh, model train uh, uh, collector and passionate builder and uh, we were going to Germany and around and I always was looking for uh, you know um, pencils pens and so on every all the stationery yeah. the little uh, okay cool and for me is a way to uh, I'm um, I'm very mathematical I'm very uh, strategical in my business uh, but I always said that I need to escape from that reality sometime. And the best thing for me is to write. And it sounds kind of like the dichotomy of, of my life is uh, being very uh, structured, very methodical, very sharp uh, mm -hmm. and surgical with uh, business. Uh, and, and, here. And, I need, and I need a way to express my emotions. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, sometimes it's difficult with words. And so I just love to write. Oh, that's fantastic. I love, love this kind of stories always. It's super interesting because each single collector that we spoke to has his own reasons. But at the end of the day, it's all, always about somehow escaping yeah. and expressing yourself. And that's something that I think human beings always need. And so it's super interesting uh, to, to, to hear what moves you when it comes to pen collecting and pens in general. What were the first pens that you acquired? Like the more serious, not the, the $30 but a bit more the series. Um, they were, uh, I remember, I was uh, 14 years old and I always had this uh, passion for Mont Blanc. Oh. And uh, <laughs> these one are the four pens that are 24 years old. Fantastic. Uh, and they are clearly a uh, ballpoint, uh, a roller, uh, pencil Fantastic. and fountain pen. Oh, so you have the set of all the four yeah. Meister tricks. They, they were all engraved. All also. engraved. Yeah. With all M, LM. Luca Maraschi, yeah. LM. Super yeah, and cool. that for me was a, a, a sense of uh, uh, achieving something, right? I sold uh, uh, you know, a company and then uh, I uh, liquidity and I said, hey. That young? Yeah, sold my first company that was uh, very young. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I, and I always loved uh, um, 
you know, I always had this dream of having a Mont Blanc pen. Uh, and so I went to the store and I said, hey, I want to get uh, four Mont Blanc. That's such, such a strange but super nice thing. I mean, I cannot, yeah. uh, I, I, I can't believe it. And so you still have your first four yeah. pens that you acquired. Yeah. And I love the fact that it's this set of obviously Mont Blanc because yeah. it's the first thing that comes to your mind. Classic, uh, so they are, they are not, they are, I probably, if it was now, I would only go for Le Grand at, at of minimum. Course, of course. I love big pants. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I still love them. I still have them and I'm never going to get and, rid of them. And they have an incredible meaning to you because yeah. they they, yeah. they are of a specific time life of your yeah. life. And, and that gives it so much more value yeah. than the pen itself. And, and then after these pieces, you once told me you had a bit of a pause, right? Yeah. Nothing happened. Yeah. And... Tell us about, about this. So you bought this pants, I guess you used this for, for quite a long period of time. You weren't, in the, you weren't in that pen collecting kind of mentality. No, not yet. But then? Um, I had a kind of break between uh, uh, the time I bought this pants and uh, the time I restarted with real fountain pens and I started using rollers just because I was traveling and they were handier. So I had, uh, uh, I, kind of like had some transitional pants that were rollers. But then something clicked uh, and uh, I, I had the need to start uh, feeling again uh, that connection with what I was writing. And so I started again, uh, you know, collecting uh, uh, pants. I started again with Mont Blanc. So for me, it was uh, always a Mont Blanc. Uh, so obviously like, so the first pants that you started rebuying yeah. were Mont Blanc pants. Yeah, because 149. Of uh, course, And yeah. then uh, I moved into some limited editions. Yeah. Then I went to some uh, uh, more limited, so the 40, 4810. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, the collection really exploded in the past uh, few years when I really felt the need uh, to uh, to uh, to write again and uh, especially uh, I think one of the turning points for me to uh, go back to fountain pens was like a personal kind of like uh, uh, moment in life when I was uh, traveling for work but I was also kind of like uh, going from uh, um, you know living completely alone in a different country and for me it was a nice escape you know when I had my downtime I could write I could write down my thoughts and I was baking my new uh, startup idea. Mm -hmm. And so I had this kind of old thrill inside of me to uh, go back and write. So mm -hmm. I wrote uh, plenty of uh, Moleskine's uh, uh, books uh, uh, with uh, one, my 149. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, in the past few years, I fell in love with the... And I think that's a, an awesome thing that you're mentioning here is the fact that every idea or er every great idea that generates value always comes from writing your thoughts, your ideas on paper at the end of the day. Oh, if, even if you're a tech guy, that's always, it's incredible. You know, you're a tech guy, uh, Sandro is too, Lars is too, and you too, but you go back to analogic writing. Oh, every time. It's because uh, for me, and as you can see, I, I always carry my uh, agenda. I don't use digital calendars at all. Uh, and I have a couple of different uh, notebooks that I always carry with me. And every time that I travel, I change them so they are completely clean for my new ideas. This is a small uh, Louis Vuitton one. Yeah, right? that I, I custom uh, uh, <laughs> made uh, the, 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 inside. the inside with the uh, Leuchtturm. Leuchtturm. <laughs> nice. uh, just because Vuitton couldn't make uh, a notebook that I in the way I wanted. Yeah. Um, and the uh, recent addition to the collection is the Virgin Hublot. And still, I put uh, the Annemule just because for me, it's not about uh, the cover only, it's about the paper that of I'm course, using, right? Of course. So it's very important and uh, this is basically, I, um, uh, my wife gave it to me and Beautiful. she said, I, I love you to, to, to uh, go back to uh, have... How nice it is, huh? And I write all important things that are related to my work on yeah. this uh, agenda. So I, I just love it. Yeah. I can't travel without it. It's a nice way to, to show also how fashion and luxury brands have a connection to yeah. writing instruments. And uh, again, you're, you're living a lifestyle here. Uh, so you have this very nice uh, Louis Vuitton notebooks, but then 
you have this whole beautiful selection of pens and um, we have quite a few things to discover here so that's gonna take us a bit of time for sure and it's only halfway and, and <laughs> it's only, yeah i had i had to tell luca luca please we have to put these pens away because it's gonna be just too much but i think there's quite something to to discover here i would say we start from, from there yeah. quickly, because I'd like to understand, I see there is a beautiful selection and collection, and you will see two good fellas, of 149. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the, this wonderful, uh, 149 collecting, because Hi. here, <laughs> Luca, it's all about collecting and why, and, and, and the reasons that inspire them other people too. Yeah. I, I think uh, Mont Blanc, I, I, had, I have a lot of Mont Blancs, many. I realized that uh, for me, the, the beauty of the history of changes, of Nibs, uh, and I learned a lot from this guy I met, Federico, taught me a lot about the history of the 149. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just love the connection with the, with, the, with the moment in time of history. So I, this collection uh, is going from 1970 mm -hmm. uh, till uh, basically the year 2000 with uh, West Germany, also Mont Blanc, uh, the two anniversaries, so the uh, 75th, Five and 90th. 90. The 90, the 90th was in rose gold, yeah. while the 75 has this very nice ring on the top of Correct, the cap. Correct, with a small diamond. Very and nice. uh, the beautiful piece, uh, uh, Teatro La Scala, uh, which is beautiful because it's a connection with the other uh, Mont Blanc. Of course. Um, and uh, this one is uh, uh, um, Luciano Pavarotti. 888 uh, and it's very important this band to me because uh, when I was a kid I remember my father singing the Turandot uh, in the middle of the night and I remember my mom going and say Paolo you're screaming and uh, this one is uh, the celebration of La Turandot uh, yes. one of the masterpieces of Luciano Pavarotti and you see again uh, like for you having this pen is not about having a you know Sorry, I, I mentioned the price because this yeah. is around 9,000. It's not about having a $9,000 pen, but it's about all the memories that yeah. this pen bring you up and that give this pen a much higher value than simply the value of the pen of the piece itself, right? Yeah, it could be a $10 one for me. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Right? Exactly. Beautiful, beautiful piece. You have the Napoleon there, so? Yeah, this is, this is actually from... Uh, <laughs> Uh, my uh, experience, uh, I, 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 uh, in 2017, after traveling so many times to the States, I got my visa revoked and put on a list where uh, <laughs> I can't really go to the States. <laughs> and so uh, as a way, I'm, I'm a rebel, right? As a way to also, um, you know, being a little bit of a rebel, I decided to get this Napoleon Bonaparte because he got exiled, right? Exactly. And uh, so I remember <laughs> I being uh, in an investor meeting with uh, um, some, uh, you know, top tier VCs in the Valley. And uh, I was using this pen. And they said, oh, it's a beautiful pen. And I said, what kind of pen is that? Is that is my pen, is the Napoleon Bonaparte uh, pen. I am exiled, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm celebrating with this pen. And, you know, I joke about it, but this pen is beautiful. It's, it's a masterpiece. I think it's one of the most beautiful yeah. Mont Blanc. Yeah. This blue is phenomenal. Yeah, the stripes, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, and, and this one is like, uh, you know, a 4810, but it's such a beautiful pen. It's, they're all inked, my pen, by the way. Oh, yeah, you, you use all of them? Yeah, I have, I'm, I'm following what Lars also said, that uh, you should ink every single pen you have, or else, you know. Why you know I, I don't agree on that, but yeah. I appreciate you saying that. It's like yes. a watch, right? But on the other end, you cannot ink them all at once because I mean, you're, you like you have so many pens. They you're go not by rotation. Them. Rotation. Yeah, so, so you I, change. Uh, yeah, I rotate one Mont Blanc, uh, one Japanese, uh, yeah. uh, one utility pen, uh, yeah. and uh, usually one Pelican is always inked. Ah, uh. oh, fantastic! And you, you usually take how many pens with you? Uh, uh, four, four pens. I would say probably between uh, four and six pens, and they're all inked with different type of ink. Love it. Yeah. All, all blues except that there's always one red and one other color because I need to mark stuff in a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see here a very nice uh, Louis Vuitton kind of, but, but it doesn't look like a real Louis Vuitton. I mean, tell us the story. I know the story about it. <laughs> I'm going around and tell me the story because I love this. First of all, it's super nice, but why do you have such a, a, a Louis Vuitton uh, pen pouch? So my mom is a very creative person. 
she loves to make everything and a lot of things by herself and uh, she's also not super tall so she purchased the jeans uh, the um, Louis Vuitton yeah. and they were way too long and so she keeps all the fabric right because yeah. she thinks I can do something with it of course. and so uh, a few months back uh, I asked her to make me a pen roll and uh, uh, she just made this pen roll and believe it or not everyone loves it that's amazing uh, and it's probably the Handiest and I, I, I travel with this uh, this one most of the time. No, first of all, the, the fabric is super smooth. So the, even if it's a denim, but you can see yeah. it's a super high quality denim, very smooth. And then I love the, the fact that she used the, the, the ribbon of yeah. Louis Vuitton, which is also super quality. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you have a fantastic... Um, and it's a piece unique. One it's of a, one. It's a one of one, <laughs> absolutely. And look at what pieces he has here. Uh, M800? No, M1000. And thousand of course. And thousand <laughs> of the old uh, edition with the, the translucent uh, uh, yes. reservoir, right? Yes, exactly. That they don't make it anymore. You have an uh, Iromiyabi of Sailor here. Huh? The most beautiful pen. Bellissimo. I have the, the, the green yeah. one, you know. The beautiful Iromiyabi. And then you have here the Scipione um, Borghese. Scipione huh? Borghese. Borghese, beautiful. This is, you told me quickly the story about this pen. This is, this is a rollerball, right? It's a rollerball and it was uh, a, one of the most uh, valuable pens I have because it was uh, a Julia, my wife's gift yeah. when I moved to Canada and I signed my first contract in Canada. Very, very nice. Beatles, yeah. rollerball or fountain pen? Fountain pen. Fountain pen, beautiful. Ferrari. Fountain pen. Fountain pen. Uh, we're gonna go through, through them all. Uh, Brothers Grimm. Uh, fountain pen. Fountain pen. And then, uh, you know what? So, uh, this, this one is super important. Yeah. Uh, this is the red uh, fountain pen. Uh, this one is a uh, black roller. Oh, and uh, I gave to my dad for his uh, 60th birthday. Yes. The same pen. Ah, oh, very nice. Yeah. Designed by Mark Newson, which is a design, which is a genius of, of design of our era. You, I love him so much, and this pen is just awesome. Huh? I think it's the most beautiful pen. I mean, yeah. the roller is phenomenal. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, the fountain pen, uh, Montblanc knows. Uh, I think the nib they could have done a better job, but uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's super designed, but I, I understand. It's very scratchy. It's Star, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Star Walker. Uh, Star Walker yeah. nib, right? Yeah. Uh, but, but, but beautiful piece. So I think this is, was totally worth mentioning and, yeah. and showing. Um, <laughs> My so mom is going to be super show. happy that I that you show that you have, to show, you have to show her the video. <laughs> she will watch it for sure. Look at this. Look at this. And then you close it down like this. Uh, I told her you should actually have an Etsy uh, uh, e-commerce website. Absolutely. There is a, there is a, a designer in LA called Etai yeah. that takes uh, uh, original fabrics like yeah. my mom did yeah. and makes backpacks out of it yes. and so on. And my mom, she's, she loves him, but uh, she said, I can do the same. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, this looks yeah. awesome and they're super jealous, uh, jealous about that, Luca. <laughs> Before we move on, uh, a bit in the middle, I'd like to ask you, well, maybe it's it's a bit strange for you because you haven't seen and discovered old pens, but just to go further from your collection, what is a pen you're looking to buy right now? So there is one pen that I'm really looking uh, forward to get in my hand. And it's? Uh, it's a Montegrappa 007. Ah, <laughs> well. I am really... Uh, uh, you know, excited. But then I think my next one is gonna be uh, the Chinkin Dragon. Is a celebration for my son. I call him a Little Dragon, and so I couldn't uh, not get it. I'm 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 getting really into Monte Grappa. I love uh, Monte Grappa. I don't want. I love the Japanese, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. as you can see, I have a few. Um, but uh, for me, Monte Grappa is. Um, you, you appreciate the, the craftsmanship behind Montegrappa I, and also how much effort that we, we spoke about it obviously several times because Luca and I are, are a lot in, uh, in touch and you told me you appreciate the kind of like creativity and, uh, and how much effort they put into the creation of, uh, of these incredible pieces, right? Yeah, it's, I mean this, uh, uh, these three are by far uh, my... Uh, yeah, show us. Well, what are we talking about? So here? this one is the trilogy of the Divine Comedy, yeah, the Dante Alighieri, and um, uh, they represent... So the, the Divine Comedy is, uh, is a journey, right? And for me, I bought 
the pens to represent the three different phases of my journey mm -hmm. in life. And mm -hmm. so uh, the Inferno, the Purgatorio, um, and the last one that actually I uh, bought from you yes. was my wife's uh, uh, gift for our uh, anniversary. Beautiful, beautiful. And beautiful. I think the Paradiso is honestly a masterpiece. The, those three are like, uh, yeah, I, I could not not buy them. Absolutely. Right. And yeah, and the last one is... Uh, That's a closed collection now, huh? because you yeah. started with it and it's now finished. I, it's a trilogy and you have them as all you, three. As you see, I'm all about uh, completing. Like I have the Fornamikis. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, you have uh, the, the, We're going to show all of this. That, that's very nice. On the other end, what I also appreciate about you, you're never, you're never closed on something saying, no, no, no. I'm not going to buy this because... But if you appreciate a pen, if you appreciate the way it's done, and the concept you're open into getting yeah. into it and I think that's super nice and that's what we need that's the type of collectors we need that are open into discovering new things because a lot of brands are putting a lot of efforts like for example you just bought a Scribo from, from yeah. us uh, and I love that you said okay I want to go for it I want to test it I want to see how it feels and that's yeah, and it, super cool it's because uh, like I said they, I, I'm, I'm all about uh, trying uh, new things and new experiences I'm all about uh, uh, discovering, right? And I, that, that's why for me, Mont Blanc came to a point where uh, I love the pen, but it, I lost a little bit of interest, right? Just because uh, when it becomes a little bit too mainstream and there's not much connection with my, mm -hmm. with my story, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it, it loses, right? And so that's why I discover Monte Grappa because believe it or not, uh, every time that something is released, uh, now, coincidence, they're always limited edition, is connected to, to myself, right? Yeah. Like the Batman is my nickname, right? <laughs> I, I could not not get it, right? Yes, absolutely. What and, a piece in titanium. Yeah, uh, yeah. and it was a gift from, uh, from my dad, so that's uh, even... Uh, uh, give it more meaning. Uh. More meaning. But uh, this pen is, is, is beautiful. It is a masterpiece of engineering. Uh. Absolutely, absolutely. And then on the other end, you also have two like very German pieces. You have these two designs, your yeah. eight. And you said that this is a piece that you don't use that often, right? I use it. <laughs> So, I have a lot of choice, <laughs> but uh, I always have uh, my design OAT uh, with me. And it's, Why? It's, so, in the beginning, uh, so first of all, is Bauhaus, right? So, uh, I love design, I think it represents uh, um, a turning point, a pivotal point for design and industrial design. Um, and uh, the pen is... Um, it's perfect engineering, like uh, this pen is perfectly balanced, uh, the feel is great, the nib rides perfectly, mm -hmm. uh, the, the loading and charging mechanism they are insane, insane right? right yeah. um, and uh, I travel uh, uh, on airplanes with uh, that pen and it's not fully inked, right? And I you never have no get problem. zero, you can open it and you see the nib is clean, right? And that tells everything about the German design, right? Yeah, craftsmanship, um, industrialization, yeah, and so on. Yeah, and the, the symmetry of this pen is uh, phenomenal. Um, you I weren't that sure into buying into what the hood, right? Um, I, I, I pushed you a bit into going for it. Huh? I, I, let me say that I, I started watching your videos, mm -hmm. right? And what I really loved about you and your content uh, uh, it was it was a very objective view on things, right? And uh, but it was also very emotional, mm -hmm. and that's why when I saw you writing with the Design 8, uh, I got really intrigued by the the pen itself. And so uh, we actually connected uh, for another pen that then I didn't and uh, buy from you. I, I was trying to recall. It was this pen. Uh, it was uh, I connected with you to uh, to um, try to get to the Graf von Faber Castell, yes. uh, and uh, I don't remember how, but then I ended up uh, actually. Uh, you had this one from La Stilografica in Milano. Yeah, from Christian, uh, and then we connected because I. Uh, uh, and they're not here, but I have the couple of Agatha Christie. Yes. And uh, I was looking for the, the normal edition. Yes. Um, and, and you had it, so I said, hey, let's get that one and uh, uh, 
Design 08. Fantastic, very good, yeah. very cool. So you got the Agatha Christie and Design 08 as first pens from us, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. They don't even remember that because you got quite some pens in the last. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. And then you said you mentioned you have the two Yukari, uh, I mean the number twenty and the number fifty of of uh, Namiki, yeah. which we know are, are great. Uh, this is one of the first, like this pen you got from La Stilografica. Imperum Romanum. Uh, I remember you you bought it a few months ago. Yeah. Beautiful piece in this yes. white marble. Last piece in the world. They took it from Nuremberg <laughs> to deliver it to you this, through us. Uh, these two pens are extremely important. 2020, the year of my son. Uh, 2018, the year I got married. And oh. Plus, uh, I'm I love uh, uh, the Roman history. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Sparta is uh, the clear representation of a great uh, example of the the Greek Empire, right? Yes. And so these three pens. And those two, they represent also my journey. Uh, I studied at the classical study in Italy, and I always uh, was uh, kind of like not proficient in Latin and Greek. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's just that I didn't really want to study, to be honest. Yeah. And so that, that's you're that's, you're a doer, huh? so you gotta be on the field doing things. I, I just I love to do things more than you know the theoretical. I love theory, but this one was going beyond uh, the theory, and so. Yeah. No, Luca. What, look, what I love about about you collecting, I, I already mentioned, but is first of all the fact that it's not a f about the price when you buy. Obviously, no. you have a lot of very important pieces yeah. because you you're a hard worker and and can do so, and that's something I always appreciate because it's also a sign of uh, appreciation toward your own work. So you're rewarding yourself with these pens. But then also each single pen has a special connection to your life. You said the year of, 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 of your marriage, the year of the birth of, of your son. Uh, that's something absolutely which, which I adore. If we move further here, yeah. we have a beautiful selection of, uh, of pelicans, which you're getting a very nice, uh, you're, you're really getting a very, very nice collection here. Uh, so this is the latest one, huh? The latest, latest is the, the piece, uh, the rare, rare piece. Which you acquired, but this is the latest release of... Uh, oh yeah, but, right, but yes, yeah, yeah, right, right. But, uh, so this you just acquired then? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I, I, I was oh, actually okay. the first one to uh, get it delivered in Fantastic. Italy. Fantastic, look yeah. at this. Wow. And uh, by the way, my Pelican, yeah. they have something a little bit unique. Huh? Yeah. They all have the same exact serial number. All of them? All of the Maquis? 122 of 123. Come on! Yeah, they're all the same serial number. And this Toledo is what I think? This is the 20 carat West Germany Toledo M900. So this is a 20 carat nibbed Pelican that was produced only during a certain period of time. Yeah. And this is the West Germany and it's written with W Germany. So West Germany is super rare. Yeah. Toledo is a classic and I have to admit, it's Luca who told me about this 20 carat. I didn't know about it. So you see how nice it is that also me that I'm you know confronted every day with this world, I learn from people and collectors like you who are so passionate and always try to find out more about, about pens. And that's so awesome because it becomes something so um, powerful, you know, yeah. this, this, this exchange of information that, that we have. Yeah, this, uh, the, the, the story of Pelican is phenomenal because if you look, this one is a very transitional piece, mm -hmm. right? And plus it makes it West Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like I said, is uh, that piece is beautiful. I, I love it. Fantastic. And then you also... I mean... Oh, I, how, how could you... <laughs> no, I'm happy you took one. It's the only one. demonstrator that I have. Yes. Uh, but uh, is, um, is the Chrono Swiss. Uh, and what it makes it even more uh, uh, unique uh, is the fact that it's the only oblique uh, nib that I have. Yes. Uh, it's a beautiful pen. Uh, it's the only 800. Yes. So it's, it's a really a piece unique. They're all 1000 except the 900 because Toledo didn't make it in 1000 and the limited edition is 800. Beautiful. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Luca, I uh, really like discovering all these pieces all at once and, and with all these meanings. It's, I think it's super interesting for all of the viewers out there. And uh, now there is a, a masterpiece that you just received and you just like got handed over. And it's this incredible 
Namiki, right? Yeah, is uh, we can call uh, this one the emperor because it's a uh, maquia. Yes, exactly. And important, uh, tell them, tell them about, about this thing. So because the, even me, I didn't, I, I wasn't sure about this thing. So theoretically, these two, which is uh, which are like the number fifty, they should be called number fifty and number twenty, but. Uh, Commonly, they're called the Emperor and uh, uh, Yukari the Royal. Yukari Royal. Yeah. But in reality, you should call Emperor uh, or Yukari only, only the Machia. Exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very nice thing and important thing to know. So again, the Urushi one are called number 50 for the Emperor and number 20 for the Yukari Royal. And then the Machia pieces, they're Emperor or Yukari yeah, Royal. Correct, huh? correct. Uh, this one is... Um, uh, it's, what a it's, piece. it's a beautiful pen. I mean, I've been looking into this pen for a long time. Uh, it's the um, uh, Emperor Owl um, with a very unique uh, um, design. Um, it's eggshells to egg shell, this incredible. Correct. Uh, oh. And that we already saw in another pen that I uh, that I have the the Tatcha. The Tatcha, right? yeah. The Tatcha has the old wave. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but this piece is so beautiful. It's just like, um, and to be honest, uh, I um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I I was always doubting if I should have uh, bought uh, 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 Maquier, mm -hmm. and then you get the first one. And that's it. And then you look at other Urushi or uh, Tamenuri um, uh, differently, right? Because Absolutely. this is a work of art in your hands, huh? This is this is not a limited edition, but uh, like Lars said, um, there's only a team of artists that can make this thing. So and once they're gone, they're gone. They're gone. They're that's it. The design is, is gone. And, and even if, if I order as a retailer one of this, yeah. it's gonna take me like one year to to get one. You know, yeah. at least. Uh, yeah. So th there's this very um, uh, rarity kind of feeling when when you go for one of these pieces that is yeah. just incredible. Uh, since you're in business and you're a business person, I would love and I often try to ask this. What's the feedback you get from people like about uh, like you go with such a pen? I mean, you're crazy. It's maybe maybe it could even be negative when you go with such a pen. Is that so, or or you always I get mean, very positive I'm, feedback? I think it's a very great question. So I have a theory that in business uh, you need to pay respect to the person that yeah. sits in front of you, right? And so as well as I always pair uh, my outfit uh, for the occasion. Uh, I think the pen is not a, just a complementary object. It's very important to have uh, the right pen for the right uh, uh, meeting. Um, to be very honest, uh, I know that uh, many people think that spending money for a pen is something absurd sometimes. I actually don't think so. I think that actually uh, it's very important to also respect uh, you know, the sort of important deal that you're signing. Uh, or uh, you know anything that you're doing with the right pen. I would never sign a million dollar deal with not a the right pen. or whatever it might be. No, yeah. no, I think there is a, a very close relationship between what you're signing and the fact that you want to use a specific pen in order yeah. to remember it and to have it. And also the ink that I'm using and so on. I for me it's just like a putting a stamp on something, right? My signature so is inks a stamp. Oh yeah, that's very nice. I think the, your signature is a stamp. Is uh, yeah. is uh, in that moment it has a certain kind of value. Correct. You're also uh, you like inks, like you you, you of course. Huh? <laughs> I have quite few. Yeah, uh, every single pen uh, uh, goes through a cycle of uh, um, getting Hiroshizuku, uh, uh, yeah. uh, or I use uh, mostly my, my inks are like all blues. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of blues. Few reds, few greens, uh, no black. Mm -hmm. I don't write with the black mm -hmm. ink. Mm -hmm. Love, uh, love pilot quality. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and to to come back to what I was uh, to to the, to the question, what do people tell you when you, when you have these pens? What is it they tell you? Like, did they, they go? This tell you <laughs> you're crazy. I mean, if you take one of the uh, Urushi. They look like just a red pen and a black pen, right? So it's Easy. pretty okay. It's pretty okay. If you take an auto wood, uh, it looks like a nice metal pen, right? Then you go into Mont Blanc, 
and then people recognize the brand. Yes, yeah. of course. Right? Yeah. So the 149, nobody knows the difference between a 94 and a 92, mm. right? Nobody can notice it. And then you go into pieces that are more important, <laughs> like uh, I signed, uh, uh, I went to a meeting with the Batman, uh, yeah. and it was uh, in my uh, uh, pocket jack. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people were like, wow, what kind of pen is that? And I said, it's the Batman. And then uh, you start talking about it, right? Uh, most of the time it's an icebreaker. Yeah. Uh, other times it's just uh, something that I leave as it is. Like say, it's the Batman and we move on. Because uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you are in the middle of a conversation and, you know, when you are dealing with, uh, uh, in business, with a large amount of money mm -hmm. or important conversations, mm -hmm. you just want to use it as a change of tempo, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why and sometimes I take out my pen and uh, talk with the pen or, so it's a huge statement towards yeah. your your the person that is in front of you, and you would also say that it's always something positive. It it can never be seen as something negative, right? But For now, all the people that I met, they were always intrigued by the story. Mm -hmm. They were intrigued by the fact that there is so much attention and value in a pen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but very honestly. I, it's a very selfish thing for me mm -hmm. to write with a fountain pen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, if on one side is a tool uh, uh, to get the job done, mm -hmm. in my case, building a relationship or closing a deal or getting people to remember me. On the other side, I just have an immense amount of pleasure writing with one of these mm -hmm. instruments. I love it. Luca, I think we had once again, I think this collector talked about some of the best thing we can do and I had an immense pleasure having the chance to do this very cool collector talk with you that I think went over everyone else because you came all the way from Vancouver so this is really like over the top the amount of effort you, you, you put. Obviously you have business to do here yeah. in Europe so that's, that's not the question. But uh, listen, I would like to thank you very very much. Before we end, Luca, there is uh, a pen that you have just bought that has actually arrived and I would like to pick it up. Please, I've been waiting because <laughs> Maybe you can tell everyone why it's so special. I think we should. And Luca mentioned the fact that, that he's, uh, he loves uh, the releases of Montegrappa and what Montegrappa is doing. And when uh, he understood that Montegrappa was coming out with the James Bond, he told me, Samuel, you gotta get me the James Bond. But you gotta get me the James Bond the 007, 007. Of 007. Of 007. So you gotta take me the number 007. I was like, Luca. You can imagine how many retailers and people would want the 007. And good fellas, we made it. We got him the, the 007, and they're gonna pick it up now so that uh, we can discover it uh, together. <laughs> Give me a second. Whoa. Hey, Luca. Packed. Hai davvero inboxata? Totally. <laughs> Yeah, 007. Help me. It's super box. Oh, but look, this is worth everything. Oh, wait, wait. Obviously, we, we're gonna shoot, but look. 007 of 380 pieces in the whole world, Luca, and it's yours. You know what, let's do some space and let's unbox it quickly, because I think it's, uh, it's due, we, we have to, to do it. Way too overdue. So, uh, I'm happy because obviously Luca Maraschi, he came here to, to, to pick up some pens that he had purchased. So it's a collector talk, but, but uh, uh, we also have the chance to let him discover the latest uh, acquisition of his collection. And uh, do, do you want to open it up and I'm discover it? Okay, so it's a special I've moment. I've never done an unboxing in my life. Wow. It's the first time I'm seeing it too, you know? Wow. It's really my first time. The, the inks are not inside, obviously. And you can see that it is mint. It, it is mint. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think even uh, Jerome has opened it up. I mean, what a piece. 
What a piece, good fellas. It's a masterpiece, honestly. We've been graving on the nip. Where is the oh, yeah. 007? No. I'm so happy we managed to Beautiful. get to the 007. So happy, Luga. It's a masterpiece. I couldn't wait, honestly. It's just like such a beautiful piece. It's fantastic. We're not gonna ink it up on anything because that's something I want you to do. No, uh, I, it has to travel uh, on uh, an airplane exactly. and uh, exactly. you know that the uh, cartridges are uh, bullet. Yes, exactly. So I need to actually send them. I can travel with them. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. No, but this was. I think it's it's the per it's the perfect end of of this video, Luca. Don't you think too? Hundred uh, percent. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm really glad that you, that you got this spe specific piece because I appreciate that uh, such a again such a successful entrepreneur, uh, young guy, is so passionate about pens. That's exactly what we've been trying to do with this whole content and this whole storytelling is to have people like you, like Sandra, like Angie, like Lars, uh, to enjoy all of this beautiful world. And for me, it's always important to share these people I know together with our community, with our people. And thank you for being so open for me. And, uh, and explaining everything. Good fellas. We thank you for, for watching. Let me know down in the comments how you like this collector talk together with uh, Luca. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Luca is already subscribed, so you should subscribe too, 100%. right? 100%. <laughs> Why not? Like, like this video. Luca, thank you so much. Yeah, it's a it was so cool being here with you. Love and uh, see you soon. And Ciao. don't forget that you tell them. Don't forget that together we are changing the game. Grande bellissima! <laughs> <laughs>